Hi, I'm Lin Ma from Carnegie Mellon University. I'm very happy to be here today talking about our work on active learning for machine learning and database systems. And this is a joint work with my collaborators Bailu, Sudipto, and Edith from Microsoft Research. So in recent years, there are many academic contributions for machine learning enhanced databases. However, at the meantime, people are also facing lots of challenges to deploy such techniques in the real world. Here, I want to use one motivating experiment to illustrate what we think is one of the main issues. So in this experiment, we used a state-of-the-art machine learning model built for databases published in Sigma last year. And the model take two query plans as input, visualized by the plan information such as the operators, and then predict which plan is cheaper. And there are many potential applications of this model in databases, where I just exemplify the application in the query optimizer, but the similar concept applies to other applications as well. So when the query optimizer sees a query, it enumerates a set of alternative query plans, or called the plan space. The machine learning model can then make predictions on this plan space to estimate which plan is cheaper. And such prediction will just be fed back to the optimizer to help decide the best plan to execute. Next, we just simulated a training and deployment cycle for this model, where we train with data collected from uh, some standard benchmarks and some available real-world workloads, and deploy on a set of new databases that have not, not seen before in the training. And I, I'll explain the simulation details later. While the model has very good training and validation error, it has a very high test error on the simulated uh, deployed databases. So, so, so what's wrong here? <coughs> well, the issue here is that machine learning, especially supervised learning, fundamentally assumes that the training data and the test data come from the same distribution. However, in database deployments, there are various sources for shifts in the data distribution. For example, the different table sizes, table data distributions, as well as the combinations of operators in the queries. And these sources can make the test data in the deployments be very different from the training data, and hence lead to huge model error. And we think such data distribution shift problem has really become a key barrier to productionize machine learning for databases. Well, though, since the problem is in the data, one natural thought to address this issue is just to get more data. However, naively collecting training data to exhaust the entire input space is just infeasibly costly given all those variations I mentioned. And the key insight of our method here is actually to actively collect additional training data for individual databases during the deployments. And there are two main observations here. The first is that production databases are often deployed with replicas where we can execute additional queries and get labels without impacting the normal business operation. The second is that the target test data of ML for DB applications is often derivable for a specific workload in deployments. For example, for a specific set of production queries, an ML enhanced query optimizer would enumerate a plan space where the ML model needs to predict. And to improve the optimization quality for this specific set of production queries, the data collection only needs to focus on getting labels from this query's plan space and improve the model prediction there. In fact, by intelligently choosing labels to acquire from this target test data and retrain the machine learning model, our technique reduces up to 75% model prediction error for individual deployed databases by only executing roughly 100 queries on the replica. And to make these solutions scalable to the various emerging ML applications in databases with different inputs, outputs, or machine learning models, we built a general active data collection platform that works for all these different ML applications for databases. And let me explain the workflow here. So at a high level, in a deployed database, there can be one or many ML enhanced components where the machine learning model makes predictions for. And if the model's prediction is not good, for example, the query chose by the optimizer runs much slower than what the model expects, the database can then send the target test data as well as the machine learning model to the platform. And again, in the machine learning enhanced optimizer example, the target test data is just the optimizer's plan space for a specific set of production queries. Then the users of the platform can specify a budget for the data collection or the potential number of iterations. Finally, the platform selects a subset of unlabeled data from this uh, target test data and send to the replicas to get the new labels and improve the machine learning model. And the key challenge here is that the target test data can potentially be very large. For example, the optimizer can enumerate just hundreds of thousands of alternative query plans uh, for complex queries. So it is crucial for the platform to intelligently pick a small or at least affordable subset of data to get the labels 
and improve the model's prediction satisfactorily. And that's where we employ active learning to help us. So as a subdomain of machine learning, active learning or AL techniques try to find the best training data to label from a pool of unlabeled data to improve the machine learning model prediction. And AL has a long and successful history applying for databases such as in the crowdsourcing. And typical AL strategies would first define an uniformity mean score, WX, for each data point X, sort them, and just select the highest WX to label. And the most common WX is called uncertainty, which is describes the model's confidence on X label. For example, given these two query plans, the model could predict that plan P1 is cheaper than P2 with 70% confidence. And in this case, the uncertainty is just 30%. Such uncertainty metric is also generally available among common ML techniques. And interestingly, when we try to apply AL for this problem, we observe a number of holistic AL challenges arose from this a practical database deployment scenario that just have not been a focus in literature before. First is that under this significant data distribution shift, the uncertainty signal derived from these models can be very noisy. And a strategy that is not robust against such noise is almost doomed to failure. And second, while AL strategies typically assume a uniform labeling cost, the cost to get different labels in our context, for example, executing different queries, can be drastically different. And lastly, AL strategies usually retrain the machine learning model once after acquiring each label. However, many machine learning for database techniques are expensive to retrain. So it is a practical requirement to get a batch of labels before retraining the model once. And in fact, among many baseline active learning strategies we compared against, none of them addressed all these uh, holistic challenges, especially the robustness one. And interestingly, the one work that indeed investigated robustness actually come from uh, exactly the database crowdsourcing domain. But the noise mainly comes from people's uh, labeling process, but not the informativeness score under the uh, distribution shift. So just like the successful history of applying AL in crowdsourcing, we think there's actually an interesting and fertile area of future research to address such holistic AL challenges arose from a deploying machine learning enhanced databases. And in this work, we present a practical solution called HAL as the first attempt to address these holistic challenges by carefully combining some more successful insights from literature as well as some intuitions we observed through investigation. And I will describe that uh, core insights at a very high level. First, for the robustness one, instead of selecting the highest WX to label or deterministically, we actually use WX as a weight of a probabilistic sampling process to randomly select data points. So by doing this uh, by sampling, the strategy prefers points, data points with higher WX, but not overly relies on WX port quality. And we further details how adding such randomness will help uh, the strategy in a noisy environment in our paper. Second, we apply a concept called return on investment to achieve a cost sensitivity, which is essentially de divides the uncertainty by the cost estimation to get a per cost unit uncertainty, uh, and we use that as WX. And finally, there can be redundancy in a batch of labels acquired together. For example, queries with similar inputs and a similar runtime may just have similar labels. So we use a clustering-based rejection technique where we group similar data points into clusters and set a submodular threshold to get labels from each cluster based on the cluster size and uncertainty. Now we finally evaluate the effectiveness of the active data collection platform with the HAL strategy. And we use 14 workloads in total to simulate a deployment environment. We hold out each workload as the target deployed database, train the machine learning model with the data from the rest 13 workloads, and then test the active data collection on the held out workload. We do round robin for all the 14 of them and then just take the average. Next, to evaluate the impact of different retraining frequencies, we evenly split the budget among multiple active data collection iterations and collect a batch of labels between the machine learning model once in each iteration. Finally, we evaluate the platform among a wide range of settings to apply machine learning for databases, which we'll provide detail in the paper. We compare HAL, our uh, holistic active learning strategy, against nine different baselines. And here, I only introduce a few uh, representative and better performing ones. First, it's just to directly use the query optimizer's cost estimation. And second, it's just to randomly select data points. The third one is the canonical uh, uncertainty-based AL strategy uh, we have mentioned before. 
And the fourth one is a hybrid strategy developed from the database crowdsourcing domain, which just essentially evenly splits the budget into two halves and use random uncertainty for each half. Now, I'm showing you how the error of the model we introduced earlier reduces while actively collecting more data. So the x-axis is the iteration number, and the y-axis is the F1 error, which is the more robust version of error rate. First, we can see that at iteration zero, the model has an error of 32%, which is similar to just directly using the optimizer's estimates. So this further motivates the need to improve this model's prediction during the deployments, otherwise we can just use the optimizer. And the most important highlight I want to show here is that if we fix an iteration and look vertically, uh, say iteration two, where we only execute approximately 100 queries selected by HAL, we already reduces the models, well, reduce the model's error by 75%. So this is a very significant gain with only a small cost. And next, the best performing baseline is hybrid, where it shares a similar iteration with the HAL that uses randomness to robustify the strategy. And lastly, HAL achieves the best performance because of its robust, cost-sensitive, and batch-friendly design. So to summarize, we contend that addressing the training and deployment data distribution shift problem is crucial to productionize machine learning enhanced database systems. In this work, we present a practical solution to actively collect, actively collect training data during the deployment using replicas and a holistic active learning strategy. And finally, we think there's a fertile area of future research to either better address the holistic AL challenges or better use the training data during the deployments, such as adjusting the training weights of the actively collected labels or just combining the additional labels to train a larger global model. And you, you're welcome to reach out for any feedback or discussion. With that, I'm happy to answer your questions. Thanks for listening.